guys, I can't even see outside. This is insane. Look. <laughs> I don't think you can see just how deep that is, but that's... That's really deep. Um, so... I have some work to do. Wish me luck. Hi guys, this is Louise. I hope you're doing well. I've been missing painting so much. I've been missing my watercolors like crazy and just been itching to get back into it. And so that's what I've been doing this whole week, just painting, painting, painting with mixed results and quite a bit of frustration. It's been rough. <laughs> it's been a lot of a lot of bad art days, you know, those days where it feels like you've just forgotten all about how to paint and everything you make is just crap and, and you feel sort of miserable and you just want to quit, quit everything. <laughs> and that kind of prompted me to want to make this video after all. I wasn't planning on releasing a video this week. I was planning on taking a week off to rest and recuperate and just paint for painting's sake. But then I discovered that I had things to say about, you know, perfectionism and bad art days. This past weekend I prepped my studio for watercolor, setting my workstation up and cleaning out my palette and preparing lots of reference photos because I really wanted to get back to birds. As some of you might know, it's my main thing. <laughs> I mostly paint birds. I drew up a bunch of sketches beforehand and I just started painting. And even though it felt really great to be back at it, nothing really worked, you know? It just felt uncomfortable. The paper didn't behave the way that it used to, <laughs> or maybe it was just in my head, but I just couldn't get anything to work and I wasn't feeling the magic at all. I just felt held back and not in control. I made two attempts at a woodpecker and the first one I tried to use masking fluid, which never works. It never works for me. I don't know what it is. Whenever I try to use masking fluid, I just end up ruining everything. I also messed up the background, which is a classic for me. I often do that. I paint something that I'm really happy with and then I think, hmm, maybe it would look better with a background. And then I end up ruining it because I can't paint backgrounds. <laughs> I really can't. I don't know what it is. I know how to make a nice looking wash. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I didn't do that. I messed it up and then I tried to salvage it with gouache and that also never works. For me i can do it with like small details and that's what i mostly use gouache for is tiny little highlights but nothing more and so trying to fix an entire background erasing a bunch of color out it of course it doesn't work so i started another woodpecker an identical one because i really wanted to get it right you know i wanted my woodpecker and this time i really took my time with it like I sat for probably two hours or something <laughs> and I did get it exactly the way I wanted only to be really disappointed with how perfect it looked. It's like it had no soul. I can't really explain what that means. Some paintings have a soul and other paintings don't. Anyone else feel that way? Is it just me? And it's so paradoxical because I crave control and I crave perfection. But when I get to exercise that in a painting, I often end up not liking the painting. It's like it's too controlled. Perfection bores me and yet I still want to pursue perfection in my paintings. That's so weird. <laughs> the paintings I really love are the ones where I never had control at all, where I just sort of got lucky where I didn't set out with a particular goal in mind and I didn't have any expectations at all. No need for it to look a certain way. And then I just kind of surprised myself. That's where the magic happens. And these paintings are rarely perfect in any way. They might have like some proportions that are off or little 
imperfections, paint splatters, and little mistakes, but they have a soul. They're alive with the spontaneity and magic that lives in watercolor. And I know I'm sounding completely woo-woo right now, but that is how I feel about watercolors. I really view watercolor as like a sort of spirit. It has a soul and a will of its own. Most of the time I love that, but other times I hate it. Like with this great tit. It started out well and good. I really liked the sketch, I liked the pose, and I liked where the painting was going. The colors felt really good. The shading worked. The eye and the beak turned out okay. In the end, I was really proud with this painting. But when I hung it on my wall, I noticed that the leg looked kind of weird. The angle wasn't right and the toes looked kind of weird. And that's not something that you can fix in a watercolor painting. You can't erase and repaint stuff. And that crushed me a bit. It felt like I kind of tripped on the finish line and just almost made it. And I mean, of course, it's my fault. I was too sloppy with my sketch. I should have noticed that right from the start, from the sketch, you know? So of course it was my fault, but I was having a bad week. And so I really just blamed watercolor for being so unforgiving and for making it so hard to fix mistake and for being such a difficult medium to work with. Then I grabbed my acrylic paints instead. Acrylic paints is the medium that I turn to when I need to satisfy my craving for control and for perfection. So I set out to paint the exact same gray tit and also a blue tit because I thought I might as well do two in one sitting because they use a lot of the same colors and thought it would look kind of cool together. And it did feel really good to just take my time and to be able to try out different colors and correct my mistakes easily. I felt free and safe at the same time. Oh, what a joy. What a luxury it is with acrylics and oils and all of the other art mediums where you can just paint as many layers as you want, essentially. You can just start anew if you want to. I felt almost drunk on this power, <laughs> wanting to just cast aside watercolors and only paint with acrylics from now on. And, you know, I started to plan this whole collection of acrylic birds that I was going to make and reorganized my studio to better accommodate for, you know, acrylic painting. That's what I always do when I'm sick and tired of watercolor. I need to like break up with it mentally and clean it out of the way. And then I always end up going right back to it. But yeah, that's what I was doing. And I sat with that great tit the whole afternoon fiddling with details until I felt done. And I took it down from the easel and I put it on the wall and realized that I felt nothing, nothing at all when I looked at it. I mean, I got it exactly to where I wanted it, but I still wasn't happy with it. It's not a bad painting, you know? I like it, I just don't love it. Later that day, I made like a little casual watercolor sketch that I didn't film because I didn't expect it to go anywhere, but it did. And I feel so much more when looking at this little sketch that took me like 20 minutes to make than when I look at this painting that took me half a day. And that really made me think about what types of paintings I love and why I love them, about perfectionism and how having it your way isn't always a guarantee for satisfaction and how limitations and unexpectedness and happy accidents <laughs> might be a good thing, especially if you're like me and you're a chronic perfectionist and a control freak. I mean, I guess these are things to consider if you haven't found your ideal painting medium yet, if you're still, you know, experimenting, trying out different things. What's right for you might be that medium that really lets you control everything and really take your time with something until it is perfect in your eye. Or it might be a medium that's challenging you and placing lots of limitations on you and surprising you. Or it might be both. Most artists work in several different mediums and switch between them depending on mood or goal or whatever. I know we all have 
good and bad days as artists, no matter what our medium is. We all have bad days, bad art days. <laughs> I just happened to have a lot of them this week. But then the clouds parted and I saw my paintings in a different light and I suddenly saw solutions that I hadn't seen before. It took me less than a minute to fix the foot on this great tit. I just added in a toe and it <laughs> just lengthened the leg and it just made it look a lot better. And now I love it. I love the painting. It was easily fixable. I just didn't see it at the time because I was wearing my, you know, critic glasses. I've been taking art seriously for a little over a year now. And if there's something that I've learned about being an artist, it's that I am not a good critic of my work, especially not as I'm working on it. Sometimes I'm just in a shitty mood and I hate everything I'm doing, but then the next day when I see it on my wall, I'm pleasantly surprised. And other times I love what I'm doing, but then when it's on the wall, I notice all these mistakes about it. Sometimes those mistakes are fixable and other times not. Sometimes I just need to let the painting rest for a while and come back and look at it with fresh eyes. And other times it just needs to go on the big, big, big pile of failed paintings that I can hopefully learn something from. Time spent painting and failing is always better than not painting at all. It's something I like to remind myself of when I'm struggling. <laughs> We're always making progress, even when it doesn't feel like it. Maybe especially when it doesn't feel like it. Do you struggle with perfectionism too? Are you one of those proud control freaks or are you fine with happy accidents? Let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat rambling, spontaneous vlog. As always, thank you so much for spending time with me and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.